Hello, it's Joanne again from Apple Studio. Uh, here to cheer up all you artists who are self-isolating and stuck indoors and just need a bit of inspiration. Uh, I'm doing this for free, obviously. Uh, you can tell by the quality of the video and sound and light that obviously I wouldn't dare uh, charge for this. But what I'm trying to do is just as quickly and as cheaply as I can at the moment, set my phone up. Uh, and and just try and give you a little uh, inspiration uh, obviously not the best quality so please don't write to me to complain uh, okay and obviously we're going to be using brush show I don't know why I said obviously because I love watercolor just as much but we're going to be using brush show and I want to keep it nice and simple and you can see we're going to be painting this beautiful poppy head here color wise it's completely up to you I'm going to be using the violet, the scarlet, and the lemon yellow. And I'm also going to be introducing a little bit of wax resist. I've got my spray bottle if I need it. Uh, off camera, I've got a nice jug of big water. I don't really need a big brush for this. This is a size eight uh, sable brush. Uh, but any brush is fine for brush show. So let's get started. Let's start by thinking about where we want the lights on this particular picture. I think I'd like the lights to be coming from this right hand side. So I'm going to just gently kind of push in a little bit of that wax. It's very difficult to see what I'm doing when I'm putting the wax on, but uh, I will tell you don't overdo it because once the wax is down, it ain't never coming off. So just very light touches. I'm going to put some here. Just gently rubbing that into the textured paper. This is a Bockingford paper, by the way. Uh, we could put a few little bits up here as well, just to catch that, that lovely light. We could put some little dots in there if you like. That's going to give it a bit of texture. But apart from that, really, that's all we need. We're going to be using the same method that I use for the butterflies and we're going to be wetting this whole area and dropping the watercolour into the wet washes. So lots of water, lots of water. Make sure you cover every area. It doesn't even matter if you go outside the lines really because you can always make that mistake and turn it into a little bit of negative painting or as some of you know if you use a bit of Milton or bleach, especially on the bocking for paper, uh, then it does lift off quite well. Uh, but it does it does seem to work better on bocking for, for for no reason whatsoever. I'm not sure, uh, but yeah, the brush show loves the bocking for. Okay, nice and wet. I think missed a few bits. There we go. Nice and wet. And we'll start off with our first little sprinkle. So I'm going to sprinkle the yellows at the top here. And you can see that I'm deliberately not really keeping within the lines. There you go, nice bit of yellow. It's a lovely color. I'd like a bit of warmth into that as well. So I'm gonna tap in a little bit of the scarlet now. Now be careful, it's quite a strong little color. Oh, sure. there we go. And I'm going to take some of the purple and put that in. Well, what you're looking for here really is, is you're looking for texture. So it's nice and wet. I can see little areas that I haven't actually managed to wet the paper. So at this point, I'll just bring my brush in and just touch those little sections that I've missed. But obviously, very much aware that if you mix the colour too much on the paper, just like watercolour, it goes a little bit muddy. Already it looks really juicy, doesn't it? Let's take a piece of kitchen roll, just ordinary kitchen roll. You could use an old tea towel, perhaps. Uh, but just taking the edge off that colour now. But just pushing that in ever so gently into that wash. Sometimes it picks up the texture of the, the kitchen roll as well, which is quite fun. 
Look at that. There we go. I'm going to have a bog off here. A bog off is two for the price of one. Oh, there you go. There's another one on the back. If it's not done it enough, then you can go back in with a bit of scrunched paper as well. It's important that we let this dry now. I mean, really, it actually looks quite beautiful on its own. But I feel just a few little touches will bring this to life. So let's give it a minute and let's let it dry. So the picture's nice and dry. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to just show you this little scrap of paper. You can use a palette to mix your colour or I just use scraps of old paper. And it's quite nice if it's the same paper that you're using to paint your picture on because you're, just, you're going to know what the results are going to be. So a little scrap of paper is just off camera there. Or phone, should I say. Let's think about some negative painting. So you can paint this in any colour you like. I'm, I'm going to do a bit of negative painting with the purple. And what I mean by negative painting is I want to paint around some of the sections. So, for instance, I can see here and here. And just in a little bit, maybe. So we're kind of getting that circular feel. I'm going to dip my brush in the water and I'm just going to tip my board back a little bit because I want that wash to run across the paper like that. And you can see now how that beautiful dark wash really gives that a bit of life, doesn't it? Let's put it back down and you can see that more clearly. Again, the water's running down a little bit now, so I can just lift a few little bits away. Yeah, can you see what that's done now? It's given us that lovely negative shape here. I'm always looking where to put a, a dark. Uh, wherever there's a light in your picture, it's nice to kind of exploit that. So there's a nice section here where it's nice and light. So we'll just do the same here. We'll take the purple. And that is just my choice. It's completely up to you what colour you use. Just cleaning the brush. I'm just tipping the board again. Just wee, on this angle. I promise I'm going to buy some decent equipment soon. But this is going to have to do for now. There we go. Already we're picking up that lovely shape. The light here, the light here, the light here. Let's think about a shadow. So we have the negative painting here. Let's think how we could put a shadow underneath this section to make it appear like it's on top and this bit is underneath. Again, I'm going to use the purple. Why not? And we're going to very carefully, hopefully that's dry. And I'm just going to pick around some of those shapes. So there's one. The red actually has run into that yellow section. But it's not a massive problem, really. Okay. And there. Uh, and that's got one here. I'm cleaning my brush now. And I'm just wetting the edge of that wash. Just wetting the edge of the wash. Can you see what's happening now? Oh, that's quite nice actually just to flick some of that colour across. So now we're picking up this, this cylindrical shape. Just put a little kind of dot in the centre there to kind of suggest the middle bit of that. What about some other darks? What about some darks underneath? So we could darken this section. Again, I'm being mindful that I don't want to lose a lot of that texture. We can afford to lose some, but let's not lose it all. Pulling that wash across. 
Oh, it's a textural part. There we go. So let's take some more of the purple and perhaps we can run it underneath here. Underneath. And going into that section. So that's giving us another little shadow along the stalk. It's looking pretty yummy. I'm going to just let this dry now. And what we're going to do is let it dry and then just evaluate if it needs any more details. It's nice and dry. I think I'm going to just include just a couple, a little bit more, a couple of details over here. Just a little bit more, just to show that light off. I don't like doing it all the way around. It, it can look a little bit contrived, uh, she says, but yeah, try not to do that. Sometimes it's nice to pull the paint out of a, an already dry section as well and connect that with the background wash. So that looks so much better now. I think underneath here could just do with an extra touch of dark. And maybe under here, just to show that section off because that section is holding up that whole seed head. So it needs to look quite substantial and strong. Just a darker touch here. It's so difficult, isn't it, to know when to stop. I think a little bit of splattering, kind of like that. It may be in the direction that I've got already got the paint. Uh, maybe a bit of yellow as well might be quite nice, just to give it a little bit of a background feel. I'm not aiming to paint other poppies or fields or anything. I'm just looking to create patterns and a little bit of texture in there as well. So it's like it's a nice windy day. One thing you can do with this is when it's completely dry, you can spritz it with a bit of bleach. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the paint away and maybe give you a little bit of texture. Uh, I'm not going to do that with this one. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that for another time. Uh, paintings like this, you always think, you know, oh, should I add some more or is it enough? Uh, as I am doing now, because I'm just adding another little dark section just there. But at the end of the day, it's nice to walk away from something, go and have a cup of tea, gin and tonic, coffee, uh, and then come back to it later and see what you think. But for now, poppy seed head is done. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, sorry about the quality, but bear with me, we'll get there. Bye.